Integer's back. She's still in Iceland and she's still solving a mystery. Magnus, where are you? We don't know. But what we did learn in the last episode is the Icelandic numbering system, which is going to go help us with the spark plugs. Uh, apparently the number six is sex. Apparently that's the real deal there. So we got hello, goodbye. Yes, no. Interesting. But yeah, so we've got enough to do our little spark plug exercise here on the uh, little boat to over here. Let's go and check that out. We'll take care of the engine. The motor's intact, but I'll need to replace the spark plugs and cables. Okay, here we go. So... Uh, this is all based on, no, not the notes, where was the original pamphlet here? No, not here. Alright, here, so we need to get 16, 9, 19, and 13. And, uh, so yeah, so that's what we do need to do here. Okay, so we need to put this here. So these all have to be red. And uh, let's see, we'll put that there. Here. And there. So that should get us all of the right red here. Let's have a look again. So these are the standard voltages. Proper motor voltage must be flowing to jumpstart the broken motor. Uh, put that one at the bottom. Put you up at the top. Put that there. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm just going to make a quick note here. And uh, let's see, what are our numbers? Tolf. And Yuri. Let's see. So it looks like that's four. And twelve? Did I do that right? Yuri and Tolf. It should be four and twelve. Yep. Teaver and Sui. So Teaver is two. And so is seven. Okay. Two and new. Uh, so nine and ten. Nine and ten. And then the last one is Fim and Ada. M is 5, Ada is 8. Alright, so let's look at what we have to do here now. We have to make these all add up to, once I find it, 16, 9, 19, and 13. Okay, so they do. I have uh, been able to take care of that just wonderfully now what are these for <laughs> I'm not even sure so let's have a look what's new well I already said new is 10 so does that go down here and what's sexton Hmm. Sexton is 16. So that should be the first one. And uh, let's see here. Knit and crit. 13. Thir 
16 and 19. Okay. So this is 19, that's 9, and this is 13. I think. Wait a minute, let's check again. No, nope, I got it wrong. Ooh. Yeah! It's working. Don't know whose boat this is, but I'll just borrow it for a little while. You got that. Here I was thinking we were going to do the snowmobile, but it's the boat we want. Excellent. So, actually, is anything over here interesting? Like a, oh, I don't know, phone charm? Nope. Hong it's Kong. dark out there, and I don't have a map. I should pinpoint a destination first. I don't have a map. Well, that's just crazy. Hi there, it's just snowing like crazy over here. Hi. Hey, Nancy. Hey there. Hey, Elizabeth, may I borrow a snowmobile key? Depends. Are you going to steal it? <laughs> Not this time. I think I'd have trouble fitting it into my carry-on luggage. Here's the key. We have tourists take them every year. I'm watching you. Okay. Always use the provided seatbelt. Snow looks soft until you land head first. Fair enough. I heard something about your family line in connection to the ship. Do you feel you have a claim to it? It's true. The ship is mine, and everything on it. My great-great-great-great-grandfather was the original captain. So what did you think of the restoration project then? She is a beautiful ship, truly. But her history is stained with blood. Even though the treasure is rightfully mine, this fairy tale chasing business seems wrong. I thought the restoration would unite the town, but all it's done is drive us further apart. Okay, I like her sweater, I like her mittens, and I like her toque. <laughs> I love the whole ensemble here. Oh yeah, right, we should focus in on the tragedy here. So, technically, if the treasure were to be found, it would belong to you. Family. People. That's what matters. The rest is useless noise. I'm really sorry to hear about your and Magnus's breakup. It hardly matters anymore. I don't want to pry, but if you want to talk about it, I'm here. Here's one for your case file. I've known Magnus all my life. We dated four years. The winters are long and dark. We found each other in that darkness, but then... He went through hard times. He became obsessed over the ship. His world narrowed. And soon, there was no room left for me. That's the end of it. Okay. Can you tell me about the festival sound system? It's been broken for a week. Soren told me he was manning the sound system on the morning the Herlich Hyde crashed. What? But that's not possible. There was no sound that day. Sounds like we've got an alibi that doesn't quite match up. Mm-hmm. You spend a lot of time here. Don't you have somewhere else to be? No, I'm still on festival duty. In case of a ship emergency, I'm responsible. This vessel is an antique. Things break suddenly, and it's hard to hear the alarm from the harbor. I see. Interesting. <laughs> you mean suspicious. Did Gunner do anything unusual leading up to the festival? Well, if you include the two festivals before this one, certainly. He ruined them single-handedly. Aside from that, only the usual threats. Gunnar swore he'd tie Magnus up and send him out to sea. Gunnar hates Magnus. Really now? So you and Soren work together? Yes, we both run the festival. But people are not happy. They dislike him. I'm definitely sensing some of that. Why? Not one of us. He doesn't know our stories. No shared memories. He seems like a decent person, though. He's done a lot to help the town, at least. Hmm. Being his friend has a price here. You are either outside or inside in Skiprot. You cannot stand in the doorway. You will be driven out. 
We are not like Reykjavik, like a big city. Sounds like people are trying to get rid of him. Ruining the festival would be a great way to do that, wouldn't it? Your words, not mine. Regardless, he is welcome in my home and at my pub. I cannot always go against the town, but I can offer a warm meal and a listening ear. Hmm. I like the sound of both of those things. Has anyone checked Magnus's cabin? No. I wanted to. But you didn't or can't? Soren won't let anyone up there. His cabin might give me a lead on his location. Can you help me find a way in? No, this town takes care of its own. Our problems are ours, no one else's. I heard the story about your family. I grew up with so much anger. I couldn't believe people would do that to one another. People do strange things when money's on the line. I think they could bury the hatchet and move on. <laughs> I guess not. Nothing is ever buried here. Just sleeping, and sometimes it awakens in unexpected ways. Bye-bye. Bless. Okay, bye-bye then. We'll talk to you very soon. Let's see. Where? Well, she gave me the key, so let's... uh. Let's see if we can get that snowmobile working. No, no, not the boat. Snowmobile. Hmm. It's out of gas. No dice. Hmm. So I do have that gas container, though. Hmm. There we go. That should do it for the fuel tank. We're in business. Oh my gosh, I actually get... Oh, look how pretty the sky is. Oh my goodness. We're at the cave. Spooky cave. Oh, I just turned around. Alright, let's go in the spooky cave now. I'm not a big fan of exploring caves in the dark. <laughs> I'll need a light source. So I'm not a big fan of exploring caves in the dark. <laughs> oh, I need I'll batteries. Need a light source. Okay, let's go get some batteries. Oh, wait a minute. Need to check for phone charms. So, uh, we gotta go back to the store then. Maybe we should be able to get some batteries. From the souvenir shop. There we go. Now we're in all lit up here. Nope, too far. And too far again. I am enjoying all the different lights. Let's go to the dark cave over here. Whoa, Nancy, that's so cool. I like it. Hmm. What is over here? It's, it's a, glove. a glove. Wonder who it belongs to. I don't know. I guess we're just going to leave it there, are we? Hello? I don't know what you expect me to do in here. Hook. There's nothing to do. Creaky noises. Lots of pretty colors in here, I have to say. So I'm not sure what I'm missing. It's a glove, okay. So I just leave it there? Apparently so. Alright, well, I mean, we didn't really find anything too interesting other than a glove. Haven't done that! So apparently I have not explored the ice caves. Uh... What does the lady have to say for herself? You again! So, say there is a treasure. 
What was it doing on the ship in the first place? Who knows? Who cares? Money's money. It just seems fishy is all. It's Iceland. The economy runs on fish. <laughs> okay, sarcasm much. Elizabeth seems like she's withholding information. She still seems pretty intense about Magnus as far as I can tell. And she thinks the treasure belongs to her. I've seen some exes do some pretty wild things when they're going through the stages of grief. That's why when I end a relationship, I just move to a different continent and change my phone number. So much easier than doing the whole breakup thing. That must be exhausting. Eh, let's just say I don't really do mailing addresses anymore. Later. Bye now. All right. Fair enough. You're just a real charmer, aren't you? Yeah. So, let's go in here. Hey there. Can I help? Did you lock Magnus's cabin? Yes. No one should be going in there until the authorities search everything. Why not call the police? Believe me, I want to, but I live life one step away from an angry mob on my doorstep. Why do you think I stay in the culture center? I don't mind getting in trouble. What if I help you? I'll call them up myself. Nancy, please. If you were to do that, you'd be tarred and feathered faster than you can say, Hey, a fietla, Yoku. In these parts, vigilante efforts are very much the norm. Even if the police were to come in, no one would talk. I hate to admit it, but it's up to the two of us to crack this case. Goodbye. Well, on with it. Okay. Interesting, very interesting. Figure this all out. Hey, Soren, can I use some of this gift wrap? Yes. Great. Now to pick a gift. <gasps> Coco Kringle! I have a gift. A gift of Coco Kringle. Who am I sending it to? Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Look at that. Alright, we're gonna definitely get a nice new uh, copy a mug. And. Soren's using the desk right now. Soren is indeed using the desk right now. Alright, let's go back inside. We will go and we will talk to Gunner. Who is in here enjoying a beautiful uh, pub environment, I guess? Hello there. Is Gunner even in here? Yes, he is. Yeah? Elizabeth said you threatened Magnus pretty directly. I did. It was... How do you call it? Friendship. So, an empty threat? I threaten everyone! It still seems a little strange. Spoken by a woman with no friends. Hey, I have friends. Young American girl, alone in a foreign country, no parents, no travel companions. Sure, Fiskir. Sure you do. <sighs> okay, Gunner. <laughs> Soren told me about your boat crash. He will pay for a wagon tongue. Who told me isn't important? Oh, my little Fiskir, but it is. Soren is not one of us. He is an outsider, born ten miles away, a stranger. Ten miles away, and he's a stranger forever? Well, that seems unfair to Soren. Unfair means nothing. You think because a culture is unfair, it will change for you? That is not the world. That is not Skip Bro. Bye-bye. Be gone with you. Be gone with you there, mister. Oh, is there anything else I could do in here? There was a phone charm on here from earlier. Uh, I don't think I can go back here behind the bar. This just makes me want to order up ice cream for some reason. Look at all the taps over here. Quite a selection. Okay. 
Okay, something with the fire? No. Sunny June's crazy book was over here. On the bench. We've watched all those. Well, maybe we'll just go and camp out for the night. And this is a good place for us to take a quick break. We'll be back for more Nancy Drew very soon. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think of the game so far. Drop that down in the comments and we will have a conversation. Bye for now.